day, folks. Welcome to Andrew's Life. So, all you guys planning on taking a trip to Tennessee anytime soon? Perhaps maybe you're going to go to Tennessee during the holidays to visit some of your kinfolk or some of your good friends or family or whoever. Well, if you're planning on taking that trip to Tennessee, you might want to hang tight and watch this whole entire video from the beginning to the end. Because if you go to Tennessee this uh, anytime soon, you might end up like the people that you're getting ready to hear from on this video. You might end up uh, getting pulled over by local law enforcement officials in the, state of, in the wonderful state of Tennessee. And you might find yourself in handcuffs sitting in the back of a police cruiser being escorted to some jail cell somewhere in Tennessee uh, slapped with DUI charges. Even though you may not even drink. So for those of you that are law-abiding citizens, you don't drink and drive, or maybe you don't drink at all, you still might find yourself under arrest and in custody for DUI. How does that even happen? How, does, how, does, how the hell does that even happen? Well, you guys are getting ready to hear several stories about people whom it happened to. So we're going to get into this and I will see you guys in a little bit. All right, for, all right, folks, this first story is going to be from Fox 17 News in Nashville, Tennessee. This is going to be the first story that I'm going to play and react to in concerns to the false allegations of DUI. So we're going to play this story. I'm going to react to it, and then I'm going to play the second story and react to that story as well. So... Let's get to it. Middle Tennessee drivers charged with DUI when they are completely sober. Well, Fox 17 was first to tell you about this kind of justice gone wrong last February, and now the drivers are fighting back. We tracked several of these cases and discovered that at least two of these drivers are now taking action against the police departments that charged them. Well, those drivers telling Fox 17 News, Kelly Avellino, their efforts are costing at least one city some cold, hard cash. Sir, I have not it. But the pleas from middle school teacher Jeff Adams didn't work after two Goodlettsville police officers pulled him over. Neither did telling investigators about his double hip replacement that makes walking a straight line shaky. Do you have any medical problems that would impair your judgment? No, not judgment. Standing, I have two hip replacements, so it is hard to stand. Do you drink occasionally or? I don't drink at all. In fact, Adams initially offered to take a field sobriety test, confident he'd pass. Little did I know, when I, as soon as I got out of the car, I was pretty much going to jail because he, he seemed very excited that I said I would do a field sobriety test. But Adams misjudged his own ability. He then hoped a breathalyzer test would exonerate him on the spot. I don't drink. Murfreesboro police arresting a man. Fox 17 News. All right, folks, as you guys have seen so far, uh, this man that you're looking at right now, uh, he's a school teacher, so clearly he's educated. And as you guys will find out later, he also works other jobs in addition to his full time job as a school teacher. As you guys can see, uh, at this point, he has done everything that law enforcement officials asked him to do. He even offered to take a sobriety test. And he clearly indicated that he had two hip replacements, and that was the reason why he couldn't walk the way they want him to walk during the sobriety test, apparently. And also, he does not drink at all. But despite all that, they still decided to take this man into custody. Let's see what else they got to say about all this. 
uncovered in our previous report that the majority of law enforcement agencies in Middle Tennessee no longer use breathalyzers on scene, including Goodlettsville Police. Police say blood draws are more accurate and that breathalyzers don't detect drugs anyway. So the reason you're being arrested right now? Yeah, probable cause. You showed enough signs of impairment on the task for you to make an arrest. <sighs> Adams immediately lost his part-time job as an Uber. All right. I'm going to inject again. As you guys will hear in a second, he had a part-time job as an Uber driver that he lost because of his arrest. And obviously, his arrest was based on false pretenses. They falsely arrested this man for uh, DUI. And what's sad about this type of a situation is... This man is a working class man. Uh, and I don't know if they said this yet, but they will say it later in the video. <coughs> in addition to his job as a school teacher, he's also a coach. And he had a job working as an Uber driver on top of all that. So this man is hardworking. He's trying to provide for his family. He's trying to be that provider that some women say that men are not doing these days. He's trying to do all that. And yet he gets hit with a false DUI charge and he lands, he, he ends up in jail. And he loses one of his means of income. And most likely he's going to have to come out of a, he's going to have to come out of a crap load of money to, uh, to defend his name. So let's keep on going. Uber driver and fear damage to his reputation as a teacher and coach. I've had less than five traffic infractions in my life and then to be arrested for a DUI and you have to explain that to your own kids, you know, and uh, worry about it getting out to the school system. After five long months, Adam's alcohol and drug tests came back negative and a judge dismissed the case. But Adam says the emotional and financial toll are far from over. Did you guys hear that? It took them five months for them to present a state with a negative alcohol test. Five months. And let's not forget that this man could have lost his job as a school teacher. But thankfully, the school district that he works for had a little bit of grace. They had enough grace to allow him to continue to work despite all the madness that he's going through outside of his job. I mean, this is madness, people. This is madness. It was the most stressful most uh, traumatic experience I've ever had. Data obtained by Fox 17 News shows judges dismissed about 12% of DUI cases in Tennessee this year. But new numbers from TBI reveal it's a bigger problem than you may think. We found more than 600 sober drivers, people who did not drink but were charged with DUI since 2017. There's a bunch of firsts this morning. Adams decided to take legal action. This letter from his lawyer to the Goodlettsville City Attorney says the city violated Adams' constitutional rights. So Adams demanded a $75,000 settlement. The city ultimately paid Adams $5,000 to avoid a lawsuit. If this had gone to court, it wouldn't... I got a question for you. If you were in this man's position, uh, would you be willing to accept a $5,000 settlement when you were uh, when you were seeking $75,000 or would you be willing to take it through the system and try to get as close to that $75,000 as possible? I want to hear from you guys in the comment section. What would you do if you were in this man's situation? I mean, me personally, I don't think $5,000 is near enough money for all the humiliation and all the mental anguish that this man had to go through being arrested for a DUI that he did not commit. And plus he lost his job working for Uber. So I think $5,000 is an insult. But what do you guys think? Drop a comment in the comment section. Let's keep going. 
necessarily have been an open and shut case just because Adam's alcohol and drug tests proved he was sober. Goodlettsville police say the officers still had probable cause to arrest him because they say he performed poorly on the sobriety test. It ruins their lives. DUI defense attorney Scott Kimberly believes officers need more training to consider other factors that could affect a field sobriety test, like medical problems, age, and even exhaustion. People look at me and they ask, how can this happen? And my answer is it happens all the time. What we have to do as a community is ask for greater accountability and stronger training. There's no repercussion. You know what? I agree with one thing that the lawyer just mentioned. Strong... Uh, I think it says I think it says stronger accountability. Now the part where he mentioned training, I think that was just thrown in there just to save face, because as we all know, whenever law enforcement officials do something that they know they're not supposed to be doing, <coughs> excuse me, people, they're gonna always throw in. They need more training. They need more training. In my opinion, they do not need any more training. See, as you guys will find out in the second video, there's a lot of stuff that these law enforcement officials are hiding. And they got their ways to hide it. And you will see how obvious it is on the second video. But no, these officers do not need any more training. They just simply need to be held accountable for what they do wrong. And whoever is given these orders to these officers to do what they do or they're allowing these officers to do what they do, they also need to be brought to the front of that congregation and held accountable as well. I'm sorry, but I'm not buying that training crap. They, they just need to be held accountable. And, they, and someone needs to be sued and for a lot of money. And someone also needs to lose their jobs. Let's keep going. No consequence. There's a problem here. There's a pattern especially when I found out that I'm not the only one. Goodlettsville police sent Fox 17 News a statement that reads in part, DUI and standardized field sobriety testing are not an exact science. We would like to be perfect, but we are not, the process is not, and the world is not. We have performed training both last year and this. I got one question. Maybe somebody in the comments can answer this question. <coughs> Why did it take? Uh, why did it take the city of Gillisville five months to produce a negative blood test for this man? Why did it take the city of Gillisville five months? Maybe someone who's familiar with the Gillisville Police Department can drop an answer in the comment section. I I'm just kind of confused about that. That doesn't seem, that doesn't make any sense to me. It seems to me if they do a blood test, they should have been able to present a negative reading right away. Year in an effort to make us as good as we can possibly be. In a similar case, a 76-year-old man I interviewed in Rutherford County was also charged with DUI when tests ultimately proved he was not drinking. He's now suing that county for $400,000. That case is still making its way through federal court, and I'll be following it, and we'll certainly let you know what happens. I'm Kelly Avellino for Fox 17. All right, folks, we're going to take a short break between these two videos. And I thought this would be a good time for me to go over some key points about the Tennessee DUI laws. So for those of you that are planning on driving to or through Tennessee for any reason, uh, it would be good for you guys to know these uh, laws a little bit, at least. Now, just like in most states in the union, if you get pulled over, and law enforcement officials suspect that you've been drinking or you're in some way impaired and they choose to do an alcohol test of some sort on you, the two ways that they can test your blood alcohol level is A, they can do a breathalyzer test, which in Tennessee apparently they don't really do that no more. They, 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 do, the blood, they do the blood test. And if you test 0.08% or higher, then that is considered driving intoxicated and obviously you could be arrested. 
and thrown in jail and charges against you and all that good stuff. Now, as of as of uh, let's see here. As of the 1st of July of 2024, so this past July, if you test 0.15 or above, as far as your uh, BAC level, blood alcohol level, if you test 0.15 or higher for your blood alcohol level, you will be required to serve seven days consecutively in jail. With type of bill granted. No type of release granted. So again, if you visit Tennessee or you go to Tennessee for any reason and you get pulled over and you're found to have that 0.15 or above uh, blood alcohol level. You you will be spending a week in jail somewhere in the state of Tennessee. And I would hate for anyone to be put in jail while trying to visit a state, especially during these holidays. Well, it's not officially the holidays yet, but it will be before we know it. So, FYI. I just wanted to go over those, uh, couple of laws with you real quick. That way when you go to Tennessee, you at least have an idea of what the laws are in concerns to your blood alcohol level since we're talking about blood alcohol levels. Now, granted, the two stories we're talking about are stories of people that have been falsely accused. But for those of you that... <coughs> For those of you that choose to be irresponsible with your liquor and you get caught intoxicated, it's good that you know the laws. It's good that you know your rights. And again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just reading what they have online for us state of Tennessee. So let's go to the second video now. All right, folks, this story I'm getting ready to play is the second story of people being falsely arrested for DUI. Now this story really takes the cake as you guys are getting ready to listen to it. So let's listen to it. See what see what's going on. But I'm just saying, if you have falsely arrested him, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, ma'am. I promise you, because I know my son. Body camera footage shows a mother's outrage as her son is arrested for a crime he did not commit. Tonight, two THP troopers are being sued in federal court. They arrested a Tennessee man for DUI who was sober the entire time. It's the latest development in Jeremy Finley's sobering problem. Invest oh, and I forgot to mention, this is from WSNB for another, NAS another Nashville local news channel. I forgot to mention that at the beginning, but you guys can probably see it. So let's keep on going. Investigations where he's finding sober Tennesseans arrested for DUI. I need to get back in your vehicle for me. Okay, I will. Ask yourself this about your mom. What's the problem? If you'd been arrested on the interstate and your mother happened to drive by and see you. Why is my son been arrested? For driving under the influence, ma'am. He has not been drinking, sir. What would your mom say? Well, in the case of Thomas Manis, who'd just been arrested for DUI while claiming he was sober. Got anything to drink today? His mom had plenty to say. But I'm just saying, if you have falsely arrested him, you're going to be in trouble. Okay, ma'am. I promise you, because I know my son. All right, I'm going to pause it for a minute. I'm going to interject. Well, for starters, if... I mean, let's say I was around the age of that young man. I was in my late teens, uh, maybe early 20s. And that woman that you're looking at on the screen was my mother. It's not a matter. You see, the question wouldn't be what would my mom say or, in my case, what would my father say because I was fortunate enough to be raised with both my parents. So the question is not what would my parents say. 
the question would be, what would my parent, what, what, what would my parents do? Now, if you know, if that were my parents, and let's say I was that young man, my parents would have sued the pants out of the state of Tennessee because I believe that was I believe that he got pulled over by the state of Tennessee, a uh, highway patrol. So, uh, yeah, my my parents would have sued. That much I do know. And secondly, can you imagine being somebody that young and you get pulled over and then the next thing you know, you're in handcuffs and now you're sitting in the back of a police cruiser on your way to jail. You're being charged with DUI knowing that, A, you're not, you're not intoxicated, you're not in any way, shape, or form impaired, but they're going to still take you into custody and treat you like a criminal even though no criminal offenses have been uh, committed. So let's keep on going. It turns out mother does know best. Manus was arrested and charged with DUI, but his blood work shows he was completely sober. No alcohol, no drugs. And now he's suing both the state troopers who arrested him, citing unlawful seizure That's and false right. arrest. And it's what's once again captured on police body camera before the field sobriety test is even given that raises more questions about why police are arresting innocent people, charging them with a crime they didn't commit. Real quick, you may remember, as part of our sobering problem investigations, we showed you what a Rutherford County deputy said about a pool player he just pulled over for a DUI. Take a listen. Never known a sober person to shoot much pool. Oh, I know. He arrested that driver, who ended up being sober, too. Now, watch what is said about Thomas Manis last December. He was pulled over, not for swerving or speeding, but for having too dark of tinted windows in Monroe County. I gotta say, I gotta say this. I have never heard of anybody being arrested and, and, and placed in jail for simply having a vehicle with windows that were too dark. Typically in a case like this, and again, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm just talking off of some common sense type stuff. But in most cases, if you get if you get pulled over because their vehicle's got window tint that's too dark, they'll give they'll do one of two things. A, they'll give you a ticket, and then of course they'll have to go ahead and get rid of that tent. And then when you appear to court with the ticket, the judge might waive the fine if you show if you show him or show whoever that you've got rid of that tent. Or B, the officer might give you some type of a warning slip and you'll have so much time to get rid of that tent. Like they might give you a few days to get rid of that tent. And what you do is you get rid of that tent. You go to that police station. An officer will come out and inspect your vehicle to make sure you got rid of that tent. And as long as you got rid of that tent, then you're not going to be issued a fine. If those three days or whatever goes by and you haven't shown up to the police station, then you'll have to have your day in court. Typically, in a case like this, that's, that's what goes on. You, you know, typically... You're not going to be arrested and thrown in jail because your vehicle has got window tint that's too dark. County in East Tennessee. Before the field sobriety test even begins, Trooper Billy Yates Matoy says he knows a relative of Manus's and has a suspicion about Manus. If I got weed, probably high. Yeah. I guarantee you smoked weed. <coughs> when was the last time you smoked marijuana? Not any time soon. I'd say probably about four years ago. So if I done a blood test on you right now, oh, it's it come back in your system. It's come back clear. Uh, it's come back clear. According to Manis's lawsuit, he successfully performed each field sobriety test, but still was charged. Am I in custody? Yes, sir. Huh? Did you guys hear that? This young man right here, he took the field sobriety test. He passed it with flying colors. 
and they still cuffed him up and took him into custody. How the hell does that even happen? Yes, sir. Arrested? Yes, sir. For no, no, what's for driving under the influence? Oh, oh my gosh. Is there any way I can do a breathalyzer and just... We can't. We don't do breathalyzer, sir. You can imagine what his mom had to say about that. Did you give him a breathalyzer? Man, we don't do breathalyzers. Did you give him a... Then this is, this is not right. Ma'am? How can you do this? And sometimes it's not what you hear or see that says a lot. Because after the field sobriety test, Trooper Schreiner... All right, people. I want you to watch very carefully because these, because these officers are getting ready to pull some real sneaky, shady shit. Watch real carefully and listen real carefully. Goes behind the car to talk to Trooper Yates Matoy and turns his body cam audio off. For 30 seconds, what they talk about, we don't know. And when the tow truck driver arrives to pick up Manus's vehicle, the driver asks Schreiner this question. And the audio is once again turned off. Wow, so Jeremy... Have y'all cut that? <coughs> I'm sorry, folks. <coughs> sorry about that, people. Y'all catch that? The officer then turned off the camera twice. Now, again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just a small YouTuber with a little bit of common sense. And I would have to say that it is against the law for law enforcement officials to cut off their camera any time during the time that they're interacting with the person that they pulled over. But maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. Let's see what, let's see what they got to say about that. I mean, can state troopers do that? Just turn off their audio? Well, Marius, we asked the Tennessee Highway Patrol that. A spokesman said they can't comment because of the pending litigation. So I asked for their policy on turning off audio and why they don't use breathalyzers anymore. And we are waiting to get that. Once we get it, we'll let you know. You might have noticed in that story that we didn't speak to Manus. His attorney, Scott Cannabos, said they couldn't comment because the case was pending. Well... Of course, they're not going to answer that question because they know they're dead ass wrong. All right, folks, you just got done watching those two videos. And I would love for you guys to drop a comment in the comment section. If you were in any of those type of situations, what would you do? Uh, I'm pretty sure the majority of you would probably shoot the pants off of who ever arrested you, whether it be the city, the county, the state. But I want to know, what would you do? How do you think you would react? Now, for those of you that are just tuning into this channel, and maybe this is your first video or second video that you watch on this channel, I just want to let you guys know real quick. Uh... I mean, Tennessee is actually a wonderful state to reside if you can afford it anymore. I mean, I used to live in Tennessee. I lived in Nashville. I lived in Hendersonville, which is a suburb of Nashville. And I also lived in Lewisburg, which is an hour south of Nashville, off of Interstate 65. And I've had some very positive experiences in Tennessee. I mean, in my opinion... Tennessee people are some of the nicest, most genuine people that you can meet. And I'm talking about your native Tennesseans. I'm not talking about, now, let's not get it twisted now. I mean, some of your Tennessee transplants are decent people as well, so let's not get that twisted. But in my opinion, Tennessee is one of those states where you can move to, to where Southern hospitality is actually a thing. It's not just a phrase, it's actually a thing, it's actually something that they practice in Tennessee. Which is one thing I liked about Tennessee. I'm not even going to lie. But, unfortunately for me, uh, the cost of living in Tennessee got way too expensive, so I could not go back to the lift. Because, as I told you guys on previous videos, I am not going to pay $250,000 
for a house that sits on uh, 6,000 square feet of land. No, thank you. I mean, I get a lot more bang for my buck here in Alabama than I do in Tennessee. Not to mention that the weather down here is nicer. But aside from that, for those of you that want to visit Tennessee, or maybe you got the funds and you want to reside in Tennessee, Tennessee is a wonderful place to live. Like I said, wonderful people. Southern hospitality is actually still a thing down there. Even today it is. Especially if you're willing to live somewhere away from the metro, away from the suburbs. If you find like a smaller city to move to, like for an example, Lewisburg, you will actually experience true Southern hospitality. I mean, like if you move to, let's say, Lewisburg, for an example, don't be surprised if one or two of your neighbors come to you and they offer to help you move your stuff in. And if you tell them, yeah, okay, cool, you can help me. I'll pay you X amount of money. Well, from my experience, they will help you and they will not take your money. Because they're going to be the type of people that are going to look at it as, hey, man, we neighbors now. You know, we good. You don't owe us anything. And that's one thing I like about Tennessee. That's one thing I miss about Tennessee. And, and I don't mean to say, I mean, I'm not, I don't mean to say anything bad about Alabama, but when it comes to Southern hospitality, Tennessee, like I said, I can't emphasize this enough. Tennessee is one of those type of states in the South to where Southern hospitality is truly still a thing. It's not just the same. And I just wanted to throw that in there on this video because I don't want people to watch the, the videos that I play. I don't want people to watch those videos and assume, oh man, Tennessee is this backward state with a bunch of with a bunch of low lifers. People there are backwards. And let's not get it twisted. You do got people in Tennessee that are backwards. But from my experience, Tennessee for the most part, people aren't like that. So hopefully the wonderful people of Tennessee can get together and and, and you guys can uh I don't know how you guys are going to do it, but hopefully you guys can get together and you can get things straightened out with your local law enforcement officials to where they can start acting right and not arresting people for false DUI allegations. All right, folks, that's all I got for you. Stay blessed. Get you all in the next one.